Good morning, everyone. Bright and early for the last day, sneaking in an extra session. Can you see my little helper here today? Can you see the fact that you're still with mid smoothie making here in the background? So I'm just making a breakfast smoothie. Um, just waiting for Katie to join us. Lucy's here. Um, and we can always jump on first with Lucy, but I was um, hoping to see Katie here at, um, what is it, nine o'clock, because she's gonna talk to us about scrap stores. And while we're waiting, I just wanna share some things that my brilliant kids have been making this week whilst they've been entertaining themselves. Look, this is a little festival food cart with some ice creams. We've got some sausages. They can be vegan or veggie or you know whatever you fancy i think this is the the stall vendor thing he's got his you mm -hmm. know sun hat on he's also keeping charge because he's you know sheriff of the of the wild west and he's got his dog come to help him so that's really lovely so we've got you know ice cream we've also got pizza so fill your boots it's all there at the coffee cart uh, and also look this is what my bigger one made this is the stage this is me on the stage with a cup of tea and the microphone, the stage lighting, and this, I'm liking this bit, this is the big screen. <laughs> this is me on the big screen, so well done, guys. This is William, who's, um, who did the big one, and this, if you bend down a bit, Samuel, this is Samuel, and they have been absolutely amazing this week, because they have been hideously neglected, um, so quite I'm going to have to, times. quite a few times, I'm going to have to find some way to make it up to them, uh, that doesn't involve, you know, going to the cinema or going for a nice day out. We're going to have to to get quite inventive about um, <laughs> screen time. Time is going screen time, screen time, screen time. Wow. Um, wow. Still wow. waiting for Katie. Let's give her another couple of minutes, and if not, then Lucy, stand by. We might be uh, coming live to you. That sounds really, um, really exciting, doesn't it? I've just sent Katie a message on Facebook, so let me just Thanks. flip over and check. I know she was hoping oh, that the I Gruffalo was going to turn up to babysit um, to babysit her little one while she came on. So it may well be that there's been a little, you know, the Gruffalo's a bit flaky. I heard maybe he hasn't turned up. Maybe he's maybe he's um, having a chat with a with a mouse in the woods about nuts. Nuts, <laughs> nuts, nuts, my nuts. <laughs> no, not your nuts. Oh, look, Ray, boys, um, Ray says, you've been very good and it's been a highlight seeing you occasionally, but only occasionally, okay? So we don't okay. need, uh, <laughs> we don't need a, a full-on... Uh... <laughs> um, right, I think we might switch over. Lucy, do you want to pop in the chat if you're happy to jump on and, and go first while we hang on for Katie? Because I don't want her to sort of be all stressed trying to organise her little one. Um, if you're happy to jump on now, Lucy, that would be awesome. Yes, here and ready, perfect. Well, I'll invite you on, Lucy, and then we'll um, we'll hopefully have Katie on for the for the second session. So, just takes a little minute for people to connect. You've got such a lovely shot of Samuel's bottom. <sighs> Hi, Lucy. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. I'm, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. It's been like the longest week and the shortest week all in one all in one thing. So, um, yeah, no, it's been absolutely marvellous. Um, I think you've done amazing. Thank you. Um, and you do so much amazing stuff. So um, you're going to tell us. I, I said, I don't know if you saw, I did a like a, a very late live this morning saying, you know, you're coming on to share this recipe that went, went viral last year about making your own washing liquid with conkers and I'm like I'm not sure that you know it's massively an ish thing to do but it's really fascinating and I think um you're going to share with us hopefully a little bit about how to do it when it's conker season but also you've got some um hi Katie Katie's here now Katie we're just going to go with Lucy we're just swapping the order around so Lucy's coming on first and then if you're happy to oh man hold on Katie let us know if that means the Gruffalo is going to have to go on replay and if not, then we might just quickly swap you back again. Does that mess up your Gruffalo babysitting, Katie? Let us know. As we can always just, um, Lucy's hopefully pretty adaptable and we can always um, swap in. Lucy doesn't have to worry. Please, can we swap back? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Lucy, no problem. Is that all right with you? Brilliant. Right, Brilliant. I'll boot you off, Lucy. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, it's hard when you've got the, 
the Gruffalo is quite a taskmaster. He sticks to his um sticks to his time frames. <laughs> you know who the Gruffalo is. So I like that we've got a very discreet amount of time to uh Hello! Hello. How are I'm you? Very sorry, the gruffalo turned up late. Well, I did say he's quite flaky. He might not even turn up at all. So, you know, if he gets to the mouse. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I got, Mummy, I need you. And I was thinking, oh, no. Anyway, I need a I think two. Okay. I've got like 23 me. minutes. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. I'll um, I'll disappear then, shall I, without further ado. Um, I'm, I'm around if you need me for anything techie. Do you, do you need to share okay. your food for slides or anything or are you? No, I'm just going to talk. What well, it might be helpful, there's a couple of um, kind of YouTube videos and links that might be helpful if you could chuck those in. Yeah, brilliant. Um, while I do the talking, if that's all right. No problem at all. Right, over to you because we're on um, okay. time constraints. So, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Katie Ryder, Clark on Facebook, um, and um, I'm the chairman of a scrap store down in Hampshire, so the Waterside Scrap Store in Totten. Um, I also volunteer for Reusable UK, which is the umbrella organisation for UK scrap stores. Um, I've been involved with them for about 12 years. Um, I started off volunteering in the shop on a Friday afternoon and two years later, uh, I was the chairman, <laughs> as is often the way with these things. And uh, I'm still the chairman. So let's go right back to the beginning. What is a scrap store? So a scrap store, um, they're usually charities or community interest companies um, and run predominantly by volunteers. And we collect clean um, business waste. It tends to be business waste from companies up and down the country. And then we redistribute those materials for use in kids, arts, craft and play activities. So we're diverting an enormous amount of waste from landfill at the same time as enhancing all sorts of um, play, act, play and craft activities. In fact, it's not only for children. Um, we've got quite a few individuals and care homes who use all of our materials as well. So it's a fantastic community resource. Um, the membership, so most scrap stores run a membership scheme and you pay a pretty small annual subscription for example, my one for an individual, it's only six pounds a year to be a member. Um, whatever we've got on a pick and mix basis. Um, I would say the most important thing to note about scrap stores is everyone immediately thinks, oh, it's yogurt pots and toilet rolls, but it's not. Um, most of the materials we have are from manufacturers. So it's not the sort of thing that you can pull out of your own recycling bin. We've got all sorts of um, large companies. We've got Next, Give Us Stuff, uh, Lush are one of our really, really good suppliers. If you can imagine all of the beautiful ribbons and fabric silks and packaging that Lush use, um, if they get to if they get to the end of a year um, and they're changing their branding, then they will send us hundreds of pallets loaded with basically ribbon and beautiful fabric. Um, so that that's a really good example. Um, we had another company a couple of years ago who were closing one of their large offices um, and they had, I think, 1,500 uh, to 2,000 employees and 19 stationary cupboards. So I had a call from a lady saying, I really don't want to put all this stuff in a skip. Um, so I went and collected about five van loads of flip chart paper, copier paper, glue, staplers, um, you name it, all the stuff you get in an office stationery cupboard. So all brand new, great quality stock. Um, the One of the good things about scrap stores, 
And we, so Reuse for UK is the umbrella organisation and it's run by volunteers who run scrap stores themselves. And we do work together. So if I get an inquiry, um, I had an inquiry from London from a theatre company, a film production company, sorry, who um, were having a clear out of their haberdashery. Um, so they contacted me and I put them in touch with their local scrap store and they were delivered van loads of, again, beautiful fabric and lace and ribbon um, and buttons and all sorts of beautiful haberdashery. Um, and we also, as a community, we arrange scrap swaps, um, which to the outsider probably look extraordinary. So what we do is we all load up a van of stuff that we have loads of, drive to a car park somewhere, um, everyone empties their van into the middle of the car park, and then you have 10 minutes to wander around, browse through other people's stuff, then you go and stand back at your van, someone blows a whistle, and then you run around, well, in fact, you're not allowed to run. Um, you walk around and load up your van with everybody else's surplus materials. And this is a great way of making sure that all of the scrap stores um, have a vast range of materials. Um, and one scrap store who's got too much of something can swap it for uh, other great stock. So a good example of this is because we're based in Southampton near the cruise ship terminals, um, we get thousands and thousands of corks um, because we've got someone, a contact who works on cruise ships and those cruisers get through a lot of wine. Um, so we get all of their corks and a couple of years ago I swapped, uh, I don't know, 15 bin bags full of corks um, for a load of um, fabric and um, miles and miles of uncut pipe cleaners from a pipe cleaner factory up north, um, which I enjoyed sitting in my garden and chopping up into pipe cleaners and untangling. Um, so there are 61 scrap stores across the country um, and they're all listed on the Reuseful UK website. So you can find your nearest scrap store really, really easily. They, most of them op operate on a very similar principle. Um, as I say, some of them are charities, um, ours is just a community organisation, and some of them are CICs. Um, lots of scrap stores run workshops, so they'll go into schools or run workshops at local events like festivals, um, and usually they're free events. Um, quite a few of them also will run kids parties for you so uh, you can book them and they'll either do they can either come out come up with the ideas themselves or if you give them a theme they'll arrange um, a, a party based around your theme using the scrap store materials that they have in stock uh, clearly as a result of the current situation scrap stores across the country will be suffering like everybody else um, I know quite a few of them have, in, us included, have started to set up click and collect. Um, so if you're running out of stuff for homeschooling your kids, um, or if you want to do some more crochet or sewing yourself, um, get in touch with your nearest scrap store and they hopefully will be able to sort you out with some materials um, embracing the government guidance and social distancing. Um, pricing structures. So, as I said, I think I think the Totten Scrap Store is probably one of the cheapest in the country. Um, it's six pounds a year for individuals, going up to thirty-five pounds for um, a school renewal. Um, and when you come into my scrap store, you have to pay for the scrap. Um, a lot of the other ones, the membership is a little bit more expensive. But when you go to the scrap store, you don't have to pay for scrap. So it's just, it's just weighing up um, what's, what's best for you. Um, one thing that I think people really, really struggle with is the basic concept. Um, and I think one of the reasons why we're not as well known about as we should be is because people just think that it's um, bits of bits of fabric that someone's cut off, cut up from when they've made something. So they're only going to be this big. 
and therefore we can't do anything with them. So I thought I would just show you some examples of some of the materials that we have in. Um, so we get loads of rolls and rolls of um, sticky back plastic, so vinyl. This comes from sign writers and uh, car wrapping companies. So brilliant for making stickers, covering things. Um, you can also, if you get a roll of black, um, you can stick it on things and use it as a little white, wipeable blackboard. Um, so we've also got loads and loads and loads of wool. Um, about two years ago, um, I had a call from a lady who was clearing out her mother-in-law's house because sadly her mother-in-law had moved into a nursing home and she was a hoarder and I'm not joking I picked up about 200 bin liners of beautiful brand new fabric which we're still working our way through now and again about probably a thousand cones of wool um, and balls of wool. Uh, we've got another manufacturer who gives us foam. So this is almost identical to the foam that you would get in Hobbycraft. Um, we get it in all sorts of different colours and it's in massive, massive sheets. So we, we tend to chop it up. Um, we get this lovely cellophane. Um, which is the waste material from photo printing. You know, when you go into boots or something and have your photos printed, that's the waste material from it. It's great for windows, stent, um, stained glass windows. Um, it makes wonderful kites. You can make huge pom-poms, rah-rah, um, cheer pom-poms from it. So that's brilliant stuff. Um, I've already mentioned that Lush do national donations and we've had probably a thousand meters of silver ribbon uh, which again we're still working our way through we've got some lovely silver concertina materials from a blind manufacturer um, a couple more cones so I don't know if Lucy will be mentioning this in a minute, but we've provided tons and tons of fabric to local people who are sewing for the NHS at the moment. So there's lots of overlockers and embroidery companies who collect these for us. And they are an amazing source for open-ended play. So if, if someone buys their child a set of, set of um, skittles or something, Thing, then that's only a set of skittles whereas if you've got some of these you've got a game of skittles you've got da -da -da, a trumpet you've got an ice cream cone um actually my son tends to use them as a telephone as well so he walks around the house having telephone conversations with granny and grandpa um so just going on to the open-ended play nature of it all, um, another great example is if your child gets given a fancy dress costume, say a witch's fancy dress costume, all they can do with it is be a witch. If you go to your scrap store and get a piece of fabric, you've got a cape, you've got a Teddy's picnic blanket, you've got a ball gown, and you've got a pond, you've got a thousand other things that a child could do with just a simple piece of material. And open-ended play is great for their imagination and creativity and innovation, which sets them up really, really well for the rest of their life. Um, another example of something that I've made from scraps is this little mop. So just some fleece fabric on the end and some plumber's pipe. These pom-poms, so we learned how to make uh, really quick pom-poms the other day in one of the sessions. If you make them out of fleece fabric, they make amazing water bombs. They absorb loads and loads of water and are really, really quick to refill and reuse. 
Um, so that's that's a very, very, very quick introduction. Um, the one thing that I was just going to ask everyone before I go um, is just a bit of a, a bit of a plea to help me spread the word about scrap stores. If you go on to the um, Reuse, Reuseful UK website, um, there's a really, really good video on YouTube um, and it's called Making Reuse Child's Play. I don't know if, Jen, you might be able to do a quick search for that video. Um, but because people really struggle with the concept of scrap stores, if you ping them this video, it's a really good overall, it, it shows you around a scrap store and introduces you to the concept. Um, the other thing is just see if you can find your local scrap store, pay them a visit and have a chat with them. And once you've seen all of the wonderful resources that they've got, just tell everybody you know about it. Um, and finally, just a thought from me personally, um, I'm definitely in the sustainable-ish category. There is a lot more that I could do at home and I know that, um, but I feel like I'm a bit of an 80-20. The getting the last 20% is going to be a lot of effort for me. <clears throat> so actually, I think that I'm better off spending 20% of my energy in just trying to get the word out there. Because if one more person uses the scrap store, or if one more person converts to reusable nappies, then the amount of waste that they will save in a year far outweighs my bread bags or fruit and veg bags that I use when I go to the supermarket. Um, thank you very much for listening. I hope that's given you an explanation. And if anyone's got any questions quickly, then let me know. That's absolutely amazing, Katie. Thank you. There are a couple of um, questions. Um, Okay. Malcolm, I guess this will depend on, on where your local scrap store is, but he's asking, do you get any breathable foam, the type used for hoovers, because he makes his own filter replacements? Um, but um, I, I... So, yeah, it, it depends entirely on which scrap store is local to you, but we certainly get a lot of foam from upholsterers, um, and some of that is quite thin and would be breathable. Um Clearly, I wouldn't want to be putting it in face masks or anything at the mm. moment. But um, yeah, and, and it's de it's entirely dependent on local um, suppliers. So it's worth finding your scrap store and giving them a call um, and actually giving them a call regularly because the stock changes all the time. And if people is on the um, reusable website, I, I looked at it you know, ages ago, but could it, does it have a list there of all the scrap stores around the country? Yeah, so there's a there's a page in there which is called Find My Scrap Store or something, and it's oh, one brilliant. of those interactive wow. Google Maps. Um, so you can just put your postcode in, and it will show you where your local one is. Fabulous. Um, do scrap stores work with charity shops to take any excess fabrics that would be ragged? And um, when I worked in a charity shop, I took loads of bed linen that they wouldn't sell. Um, yep. I don't know if there are any. So it any works. It works both ways so sometimes charity shops give us stuff like bed linen um, and actually because we we seem to get so many donations of fabric um, I actually sort through it and any that I don't think is good enough to do something with I donate to another local charity at another local charity shop and they cash it in for rags um, so nothing goes to waste Perfect. And just the last question, um, can I buy fabric from scrap stores during lockdown? Um, and are you accepting uh, so you need, um, yeah. You need to contact your local scrap store. So we're doing click and collect. Um, and I think some of the others are as well. But if you find them and give them a call, I'm sure they would love to help you. I can see a little man in the background. Oh, <laughs> and, and very quickly, do you uh, yeah, accept I'm sure they, Pardon? Do you accept public donations or is it all just from businesses? Um, we do accept uh, materials from individuals as well. Um, but what I would say is if it's something that you can recycle at home, like yogurt pots or whatever, mm. um, then, then we won't take them because people tend not to come in looking for things that they've yeah. already got at home. Um, the other thing as well is that it must be clean. So mm -hmm. we've had people drop off dirty yogurt pots and actually i once found a pair of pants in a bag oh no <laughs> oh um absolutely yeah. amazing thank you katie um the gruffalo has has run his course i think so we'll let you um <laughs> run off and disappear but that's absolutely 
Um, fabulous. Thank you so much. You're a superstar and you did this at such short notice. You're very notes. welcome. Thank you very much for having me and squeezing me in. Oh, no problem. Brilliant. Um, right, we'll just get Lucy back on. Thank you for being so flexible, Lucy. Um, we've got a scrap store. It's about half an hour, 40 minutes from us. Um, Wiltshire Scrap Store. And they are amazing. They do workshops during the holidays for the kids. They do workshops um, for grown-ups during the week on like crafting and things like that. And they're also, they've got like these laser cutter things. So they make up these craft packs from all the scrap that they'll, um, that they have for sale in the shop. They have, you know, like um, exercise books that have, I don't know where they've been donated from, but like all sorts of stuff you would never expect. Um, so I'm, I'm a massive fan. We, off, you know, we'll try and go there at least once every school holiday. So um, to take advantage of a, um, you know, a, a workshop and to, to top up on some supplies. So hello, Lucy. I know um, you work sort of, you've, you've done some work with Katie at the scrap store. Is that right? Yeah, so I'm really lucky because Katie's scrap store, the Waterside scrap store, is my local scrap store. Go back, tongue tied. <laughs> so, um, if I could wave a magic wand and improve the lot of any local community group, it would be the Waterside scrap store because mm. I want them to have a bigger shop. <laughs> <laughs> we love it so much. I'll give you an example of how we use it. So I'm I'm a, a home educator all the time not just now this cupboard behind me as i had a conversation with jen earlier in the week about this cupboard is our home education cupboard it's where we keep all our resources and there is probably a good 50 percent of what's in there has come from the scrap store um and this this it does need to tidy up but this cupboard is part of our journey through education between me and my son as friends as partners in this journey so that's why we have have a cupboard that is it's on show if you like um but we do go out to, to groups people often think that home education we just sit at home all the time and we actually go to a maths group in totten where james can sit and learn maths in a group with other, about five other children and it's just around the corner from the scrap store and it, luckily that's one of the mornings that they're open um and after maths, we all head round there. The kids descend on the shop and they come out in fancy dress and they and one of the girls loves dressing James up with all the bits and things they can find in there. And the the energy that it comes from them being able to go in and just pick up the pieces and create from a piece of fabric, create from something they've found. Um, it, it's magical. The only trouble is the shop's so small, us ad oh, I don't know if it's a problem, us adults stand outside while the kids go in, five That's minutes break. Better, isn't it? Allows them to be a bit more, um, you know, not not like you go, oh, don't get that, or I'll oh, get that. And I'll sometimes go to my kids, oh, please don't get some more. <laughs> I know, but it is beautiful. And the great thing is I can take stuff into them. So I, I, I have this um, mission to clear my, my crafting and and all, all the supplies so i take a bag in and i resist coming out with a bag <laughs> although that doesn't always work um but katie has also been absolutely amazing so i've been helping with um finding supplies for people sewing um nhs stuff so we've done scrub bags we've done headbands we're now on masks and one of the, the things that, that immediately struck me was everybody was going to Amazon to buy mm. supplies. It's like, no, don't. <laughs> so Katie was brilliant. We had a, a bin bag full of bra elastic, which is now in headbands helping our NHS. Yeah. Fantastic. So, you know, support them. They're wonderful people. And, you know, they it, it's such a, a really good way to reuse waste from from manufacturers and things like that it's really yeah. really amazing perfect and you're going to talk about um something else with us today about as I said, this, this recipe that went viral didn't it was it um last sort of autumn time when the when the conkers were around so um, yeah that's right yeah so I'll and i'll let you i'll let you do that <laughs> <laughs> so um i've been using conkers to wash my clothes for around about two and a half years now and um, last October I was on my way I was, we were 
car journey up to see my sisters who live up north and I suddenly you know you scroll through Facebook and I suddenly realized that everybody was being conquer season pick the posts that were, were beginning to go around where people were saying oh you can use conquers to do this but I could tell the way people were writing that they actually had never use them themselves they were just copying and pasting and this happens so much and it's so important to me that when we talk about things online when we talk about um what you can do and what you can't do actually have some experience actually talk from your heart and talk from your experience tell your story so i sat there and i wrote this post and i just shared it to a few people who i knew were interested by the time we got up north it had gone bonkers and we had a couple of million views and it it, it still gets commented on all the time so i thought i i, I would try and, and show you a little bit more about how we do it um and um a little bit about the rest of my work so hopefully oh and i need to screen share don't i and hopefully i'll get this right this time jim <laughs> Um, oh. So if you click on the, the share screen and then you should see um, your entire screen or application window. Ah. If it's PowerPoint or something, you want application window. Um, ah, yes. Okay. It's all something different on mine. Because the other thing I'm doing is using... Um, free software which is something that i've not seen somebody talk about at all so can you see that okay is that in the right position is that doing what it should do can you see that jen sorry i just turned my mic off yes perfect yeah. Yeah. okay so um if we're looking towards breaking free from all of the kind of petrochemical I don't know how to explain it, but I, I, I'm trying to use all open source software. So I'm not paying into the big businesses who are controlling all of the stuff that we're, we're doing. Um, and it, it's it's challenging sometimes, but it's interesting. So washing your clothes with conkers. OK, so. So conkers or horse chestnuts are an amazing resource. Um, they're not a native tree, so places like the Woodland Trust um, are not particularly interested in looking after them but they've been around for a long time in the UK and I believe they they do have a, a really valuable place um, within being a bit more sustainable in this in the UK um, they are suffering from a disease so we do need to take care of them we do need to look after them I have several trees in the waterside area that I am now keeping my eye on and monitoring and recording what they're how they're, they're doing over the year um, because they are now important to me they are really vitally important to me um, horse chestnuts have been used in medicine for a long time they um, you can get them in in lotions and things to, to rub on your skin you don't take them internally but they um, that they have many uses so this is the picture I took of the, the when I started my experiment for what could I actually wash all of our clothes with just with conkers. The first experiment I'd done, I just washed towels and they come out really lovely and soft. No need for fabric conditioner or anything like that. They're really lovely. And then, right, this was my whole year. So I prepared eight kilos of conkers. The preparation is you need to collect them. I then wash them, um, leave them to, to just dry off. And then they go through with this lot I did in a, a blender you, or a chopper thing. You need it to be one that you're not going to use for food, really. So an old secondhand one. You can break them up by um, crushing them with a, a hammer. You can put them in a pillowcase and then bash them. Um, so they um this is eight kilos so it was eight kilos of, of um fresh conkers dried down into this um and that actually lasted my family of four for one and a half years bearing in mind that i do a huge amount of washing my other half 
um, apart from running New Forest Aquaponics, which I'll tell you about in a minute, he builds ponds. He gets so incredibly dirty. My oldest son now helps him build the ponds. I get two sets of big men's clothes every day to wash because they you they just have to be they caked in mud and yet these that lasted one and a half years so real saving on money um so once you've got your dried conkers so yes yeah, so the preparation again on the conkers once you've chopped them up you need to dry them out so you can do this in an oven i do it in my dehydrator um because I tend to burn them in the oven. Um, and it, it, once they're dried, they will last you and they, they keep for, for until you need to use them. So the equipment I use to, to use them on a daily basis, uh, I have a scoop. This scoop is my measure. <coughs> and a heaped one of these is roughly 40 grams of Conquer, dried conkers and that's how much I use to a 500 500 mils of water um, I have a funnel an old tea strainer an old chopstick and a reused plastic bottle um, the funnel I made by cutting the bottle in half and then we soak the, the sap, the, the horse chestnut, horse chestnuts, conkers. So you soak them in 500 mils of hot water and you can do this up to three times. So um, the first time boiling hot water onto your 500, 500 mils onto your 40 grams of conkers. And you get this after, this is after about half an hour, you get this bit of, of um, you can see where the sapiens are. And that's the bit that we're trying to get out. And once you've, you've mixed the liquid, so you need to mix it up before you use it, and you get this really lovely creamy type of, of liquid. Um, and this is the, what you're going to use in your washing machine. Um, that's, the, that's what a first soak looks like. This, and depending on how clean or dirty your clothes are will depend on which bit, um, how much of this you use. So say I had my partner's really dirty stuff, I would use the whole 500 mils from a first wash in the washing machine. If I had my clothes, I would use half of that in the washing machine. So that would give me two washes. The second soak, I would probably use um, the whole lot on my clothes. And then the third soak, I use for my short 15 minute towel washes. Um, and that works brilliantly. So you, you can manage the amount of, of washes you get out of each um, 40 grams of conkers. Use a tea strainer to sieve your liquid that you don't want the bits of shell going in and a note on whites if you're washing whites um, try and remove as much of the broken shell as possible the shell can give if there's a lot of it can give a slight tinge to the whites um, it's not something that worries me because I tend not to wear white clothes white doesn't fit my lifestyle so um but if you do have whites, then you want to just make sure you've got almost no shell in there. Once you've used your conkers, they can go in the compost heap. You can see the colour has slightly changed. So the more you soak, by the time you get to the, the third soak, you have almost white conker, conker, leftover conkers. And that shows you that all the sapiens have come out. And then um, I would really like you to actually do this for yourself. Go and collect your own conkers, save yourself money on your washing powders and save the environment because really, you know, all the things that go into our washing powders by the manufacturers to make your, your washing this, that, t'other, is it necessary? Do we really need it? Nobody ever says to me, oh, your clothes are really horrible and dirty and whatever. Um, 
and I love how soft they all are. Um, I'm, I couldn't use anything else. So I really, really want you to do this for yourself come the, the autumn. Even if you only just save enough to, to maybe wash your towels with or, or whatever. But you mu if you do do this, please make sure that you help take care of those trees. And if you can, try and plant some of the conkers and, and get more trees growing. I've now got um, five horse chestnuts in pots, both at, at the aquaponics farm and at, at home, um, which I will nurture and hopefully be able to find permanent places for them to live. Um, and on the, the, but if you can't wait, if you want to have a go, um, or if you'd like to support our work, we did my son and I um, we prepared a couple of big tubs of, of the the conkers. Um, we call them washkas because we needed to come up with some form of name for them. And you can buy 500 grams um, of dried and prepared conkers to so that you can have a go. The money goes to support our work at New Forest Aquaponics, and we are a regenerative community interest company and we work with many things you can see our website uh, the link to buy the washkas is at the top bar here that's what you see when you it comes up and that's the blog post um, about them and our work does it what one of the things we do is connecting people so like we connected Katie in the scrap store to all of these people in the waterside who were sewing for the NHS who'd never heard of them, but they have now. And that's the sort of thing that we're doing. It's not just about eco bricks. It's not just about the conkers and it's not just about aquaponics. It's about tying everything together um, and healing people, environment, community. And that's about it. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you, Lucy. Samuel's been sat here next to me, absolutely fascinated. And he's like, can we do that? Can we do that? I think that's going to be our project for the autumn, isn't it? Have um, a go. And it's I so good collecting conkers. I can't walk past them anyway. You kind of, you have to, you know, and then you find a really bright, shiny one and you um, want to pick it up. So amazing. And I've shared those links for you um, into the chat. A couple of questions in the question box, if you've got yeah. um, a minute. How long does the liquid keep for Katie's album? so you can keep it in your fridge for seven days um i don't tend to keep it what i do is every morning when i, I so i boil the kettle for a cup of tea have to start the day with a okay. cup of tea <laughs> and i boil enough to make two jars of the conquer liquid and that then will will do because because of the boys i have a huge amount of washing to do dries me around the bend so but i then can put on a wash first thing in the morning and I usually do a wash um, last thing at night and I have some spare if I need to do more. I then, if if I haven't used it all up, I use it the next day. So it's it, I don't need to keep it. But if you do, about seven days in the fridge. Yeah. And then a question um, from Malcolm. Is there a neutral smell to it or do you add any sort of essential oils or anything? So there's no smell to it. It comes out with, with no smell at all. Um, we do sometimes add um, essential oils if we if, if we want to, if we, if we fancy it. Um, one of the things I found is that um, if you do add a, an essential oil, you don't have to add it each time. Okay. It kind of almost lasts on your clothes. Um, one of the things that we find is that if anybody so because I take a lot of fabrics in to, to recycle and upcycle and if somebody gives me something where they've used lots of fabric conditioner the smell is awful I'm always hanging stuff out on the line to air because I can't stand the um, smell of, of fabric conditioners now um, my son who James who's nine now he actually cannot bear if he gets given clothes and they've been washed in normal washing powder and uh, 
um, fabric conditioner, he will ask me to wash them before he will wear them because he finds it so irritating. And and there, people with skin sensitivities will find that the conkers don't aggravate it. They they really help. I was just banging something with a pestle and water. I was like, can you just stop that for two seconds? Um, <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Right, That's okay. um, so useful. And um, yeah, you know, both you and Katie are doing such amazing things. So um, that's one of the things I've loved about this week is being able to hopefully kind of share all these amazing things with a, with a wider audience and all these amazing people. And it's so yeah. life affirming to know that there are people like you guys out there doing these awesome things. So thank you so much. Um, and I might see some of you guys in a minute uh, at 10 o'clock with Emma talking about um, engaging with people at work around sustainability. So completely, probably other end of the spectrum. <laughs> well, no, because you are still engaging loads of people yeah. at your yeah. work. Just not what we envisage as a traditional workplace, is it? So um, Yeah, and maybe that's what one of the things yeah. I'm probably doing. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much. And thank um, you, Jen. See you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.